So, Chimaso Champa and Pete Dunn, who we thought were, like, gone from NXT, because Pete Dunn was supposedly, like, you know, like, dead. They had, like, a little funeral service for him and everything, and Champa had lost the NXT Championship. We all thought that they were going to go to the main roster. It's also the Rumble this weekend. Perfect time to bring him to the main roster. But they just kind of showed up on NXT again this week. So maybe they're not going to the main roster. We'll talk about it today. Welcome to the Rust Top Podcast review of NXT 2.0. I am Chopper Peak Quinell. I'm joined by my intangible co-host, as always, Tempest. He'll be winning the Royal Jamble this weekend, obviously. Liar. Not about that. That's all true. That's all true. But liar. Liar who lies. What? You what? lied to me. You lied to me, Pete. What are you talking about? Ago. It was weeks ago, but everyone's seen the video now. Blood on the clock tower. <laughs> You lied to me. I you I, betrayed the trust of L I W, and I don't know I, if we will ever recover. I bent the truth slightly. You maybe. lied. You said I am a noble. You came. You came to me. Mm -hmm. and you said. You said lies. And you know what? I, lies make baby Jesus cry. I may have told you that I was in fact a noble, but may but you know, maybe I was talking about my real life. Maybe I have royal heritage, you know? That would make me a noble, you know? Liar. You don't know that. You're, That's what I'm you saying. Were, you were, were were you reading about someone, someone, and someone, the names that you forgot and cost you the game? <laughs> don't put Spoilers. that on me. Don't Spoilers. say that it cost me the game. Uh, don't, please don't let Liar. it be true. It kind of did, though, didn't it? Um, I'm not, I'll never forget. I know it's Ollie Laurie and Dom now, though. I've got that up here now from, from that incident. It's fine, Tempest. What would you do if you were on the evil team? Hmm? Would you just tell uh, the I truth? Would, I wouldn't be on the evil team. I'd be on the good team and I'd win. I wanted to be on the good team. That's I just fair. wasn't, you know? No, you'll, you'll never be now. I know. Because you're a I'm liar sorry. who lies. But it's fine. I'm going to make it up to you because after you win the Royal Jamble, I will happily defend my new Jam That Championship that I will win on Saturday. I'll happily defend that against you at WrestleJamia, and it's going to be great. Friendly competition. It will be great. It will. Yep. It will. It will be great. You won't have a choice in the matter. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's talk about this episode of NXT, shall we? Uh, this nice. episode is sponsored, by the way, by Wine52. Hot damn. You know, like beer 52, but like wine instead. Whoa, we'll talk about it more later. Um, but you should go check it out. It should be a link in the description or something. Uh, go click that because you can get a crate of three bottles of wine. That's nuts. Um, also, send in your ultra chats at wrestletalk.com forward slash support um, because uh, we'll go through all your ultra chats, all the ones that are five US bucks and up by the time the show goes off the air. Did I just close my notes? Yes, I did. Uh, Why did so, you do that? I didn't mean to do that. I was thrown, like, Tempest, by the accusations of lying. That's are what you it lying was. lying to me right now? Thrown me off. I'm not lying to you. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa and Pete Dunne, who we thought had kind of sort of left NXT, maybe, thought, thinking they were going to get called up to the main roster. Um, they showed up again on this episode. There was a match between uh, Tony D'Angelo and Cameron Grimes to determine the number one contender to the North American Championship. Pete Dunne showed up in that match with a cricket bat uh, to kind of return the receipt uh, on Tony D'Angelo. Uh, hit him in the hand with that, which cost him the match. Cameron Grimes wins. Uh, as Pete Dunne just kind of has come back and continued his feud with Tony D'Angelo. And at the end, they were building up through the whole show that Bron Breaker's got no friends. And he's going to be facing Legado del Fantasma. And there's lots of them. And he has no friends. He needs to find a tag partner. But Brombrick has got no friends. Has, does he have any friends? No, he doesn't have any friends. So just saying that he's got no friends. And there's also a lot of them in Legado del Fantasma. Does he have any friends? No, he doesn't have friends. He should probably find a friend. They're really hammered at home on this episode. And then at the end, wouldn't you know it, he has a friend. It's Tommaso Ciampa, who came back and kind of stood alongside him, staring off against Legado del Fantasma. So both of them are back, and we thought they might have been gone, and they're kind of back doing exactly what they did before they left. So, well, with the exception of Champa now being Bron's friend rather than enemy, I suppose. But what do you make of all this, Tempest? What do you think of these guys being back in NXT? I wasn't as surprised by seeing Tommaso Champa 
in NXT again because I mean mm-hmm. he's he's Mister NXT even if it was the black and gold. So him staying doesn't surprise me nearly as much. I thought that we'd seen the last of old Pete Dunne. I figured. I mean, he doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that's going to win the NXT championship. Mm -hmm. You know, he just doesn't. I would not assume that he is in their immediate plans to be the top champion of this brand. So with that in mind, perhaps we can move him on to doing other things. But no, he's just back and he's continuing this little feud with old Tony D'Angelo. Forget about it. I don't. I don't wait, wait, know. Wait, wait. Did you say? Did you say that magic phrase? Forget about it, cuz. I said forget about it, cuz. <laughs> Thank you. Never gets old. It's Continue. like a slime phrase. It just it gets me. <laughs> forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know. It's like I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with NXT because half the time we see people get called up and then the other half of the time we've got Io Shirai that's been down here forever and is just spinning her tires, you know, and it feels like I cannot stress enough that NXT was at its best when people were only on this show for like a maximum of two years. You know, that that is like been pushed way down the list of things that are wrong with NXT. And I did mm-hmm. like this episode of NXT for what it's worth. So this is not just going to be me complaining for an hour. At one point, I had three problems with NXT. Mm. If, if, it was like, fix the matches, fix the storylines, and call up people more regularly. Now, those are way down there. The storylines are still pretty high. But the, the yeah. calling people up is still fairly low, you know. Ah, just, it makes the show so much more fresh when you don't get tired of people. And yes. that was what made NXT great for so long. Because you only had, like, two years of Finn Balor. Not even. You didn't have two years of Finn Balor in NXT. Think about that. Longest reigning NXT champion. Did all this cool stuff. Main evented takeovers. That legendary run that we remember. Less than two years. Craziness. Less Wild. than two years. Yeah, Bobby Roode was like a two-year run. Shinsuke Nakamura was only a one-year run. You know, this is just this is what you got. Mal, uh, Malachi Black, whatever. Black, Blackie Boy was only two years. Ricochet was mm-hmm. like two years. No, Ricochet was only one year. So it it's just year. like again, you got rushed through a bunch of these things, and yeah, not every guy is going to be NXT champion because of it, but it meant that the show stayed fresh. And yeah. now it feels like we're watching a show with a set roster again. And every once in a while, someone might move shows the same way that every once in a while, someone might move from Raw to SmackDown or SmackDown to Raw. You know, it's not necessarily a call up and it's not monumental. It's just like, okay, well, that person's over there now. So it's, I don't know. I've lost that kind of feeling of like, oh, well, they're definitely getting called up next. Cause like, I don't know when it's going to happen. And it doesn't feel as important as it once did either. So, I don't know. I don't know. I like both wrestlers. It means the show that I get to watch is is better. So, I'm not going to complain yeah. about it too much. I just think that the show could be a little more engaging. Yeah. And, I mean, I, I don't think this necessarily completely rules out a call-up anyway. Because yeah. they could both knowing... be in the Rumble. You know, yeah, totally. You know. They could both still be in the Rumble. And knowing WWE, they could do... You know, they could just do D'Angelo and Dunn again, and yeah. then D'Angelo will win, and then that will be Pete Dunn's last match. Like cricket bat on a pole the, match. Yeah, sure, why not? Cricket bat versus Crowbar. Yeah. Crick cr- Crowbar. Cr- nope. Never mind. <laughs> Moving on. Uh and you know, they, they could just run that match again and then have Dunn go up. Like Champa's now got a dyed beard. He's taken all the gray out of his beard, which is typically a very Vince McMahon thing to yep. want people to look younger. So, you know, and he's been having dark matches on the main roster. Both of them have, as well as LA Knight and Roderick Strong have been having dark matches as well. So, like, all of these guys look like they might be on their way potentially soon. Maybe it's after Mania. You know, maybe it's not as soon as the Rumble. It could be a post-Mania call-up kind of thing. But, so so maybe we'll, we'll see him around in NXT for a little bit longer. Um, but at, in the meantime, at least they make the show better. They're good wrestlers. Their presence instantly makes the show better. And I think they'll lose a big uh, 
a lot of star power if both of them do go, and especially if LA Knight and Roderick Strong go as well. That's four bigger names on the show. Granted, LA Knight hasn't been utilized all that well, I wouldn't say. And Roderick Strong, I think, is finding his feet as leader of Diamond Mine, but he's never been kind of like a top guy or anything. No, so I, I've, it I've. Could be worse. I, I haven't given up on Diamond Mine, but I, I'm not like anticipating them be the top promote the top faction in NXT at this point. I think there was a chance to do that. There was a few weeks of really, really cool, engaging promo packages and everything where they were really treating it like, you know, like a sport, like they were a sports faction, you know, with these guys training. And uh, I don't know. I, I think the Creed brothers have, have a lot of upside. I think that Ivy Nile has a lot of upside, but I think Roderick's strong probably has reached his peak in NXT. I can't really see him going any higher. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. I know we said a few weeks ago, or a few months ago now, that it felt like the old NXT stars were like an inconvenience for the new NXT 2.0 crew. I yeah. think we've largely gotten rid of most of them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like yeah. a good chunk of that problem is gone. And not a problem yeah. that I had. I would prefer seeing all the NXT 1.0 stars compared to the 2.0 stars, but that's just me. So with only like a small handful of them left, I think you can kind of work around it. And it's guys like Pete Dunn who've like re-signed recently. So maybe they feel a little bit more like, oh, he's not going to leave us in, in a month. Mm-hmm. So let's not book around him kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe they could come up with something really big for Pete Dunn. Maybe not. I'm just spitballing here. I'd like to see Pete Dunn as like a top guy, and I don't foresee him being a top guy on Raw. So if it's going to happen here, why not? Yeah. And I mean, like I mentioned earlier, them being on NXT is still fine. They're still very good wrestlers. They're still enjoyable. I just don't know really what else they're going to do on NXT at this point. It feels like they could be better used elsewhere. I don't know. I'm not saying that they're going to be better used elsewhere. But it feels like they could be better used elsewhere. Um, and like you mentioned, that point about how NXT seeming like it's just like a a, a fixed roster at this point. Yeah. Um, it, it definitely feels like we're seeing the same people every week now, rather than the traditional NXT formula, which is kind of cycling people in and out. You want, might not see some people for two, three weeks, but you know, one week they'll have a promo video yeah. package, and the next week they'll have a match, and the week after that there'll be a backstage segment or whatever. You know, they're still there, but they're not wrestling every week. Whereas now it's starting to get to a point where we're seeing a lot of the wrestlers doing the same thing every week and having a lot of mm-hmm. matches and it's this guy's going to do a promo this guy's going to have a match and blah, blah 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 it feels a bit more formulaic which is a bit more mm-hmm. main rostery for my, than what i would prefer but i know a lot of people enjoy that so i i agree with you though cuz i mean i think it's a very underrated portion of why AEW is a pretty engaging tv show and it's mm-hmm. for that exact reason you don't see Malachi Black wrestle every week. Yeah. You don't see Andrade wrestle every week. You don't see Brian Danielson wrestle every week. You know, you don't even see all these guys on TV every week. Yeah. It's just you you can't get tired of seeing most of the people on the roster. Them having a good roster helps. You can get tired well, yeah. of Dan Lambert and stuff. But you don't get tired of most of the roster because they're not shown to you often enough for you to get tired of them. And I think that's a bit of the problem with NXT these days, you know? Mm-hmm. But, yeah, yeah. You know, it's solid. Solid enough. This was a decent show, so I'm not yeah. I'm not fixing to hate it or anything. No, it was better than usual, so can't complain too much. Much better than um, usual. They had three yeah. good segments to open the show, and I was like, what am I watching? This is yeah, unprecedented. This is crazy. <laughs> Um, but uh, before we get into some of your old chats, I want to say a special thank you to Wine52, who are sponsoring this show today. Thank you so much, Wine52. Uh, you can get a, a, a crate of three wines in time for Valentine's Day if you click the link that's at the top of the description. It's like we've been sponsored by Beer52 a whole bunch, and we've been singing their praises. But also, this is for wine. This is, it's great. Anyone who's watched any sort of like WrestleTalk After Dark or like any of the ones pre-Christmas. No, I love a bit of wine. <laughs> <It's> happened, <laughs> so the wine from my hamper a fair bit on the, on the Christmas ones. Uh, so this is right on my alley. And he's still got to pay the same postage of 5 
UK viewers, and you can give them white fifty two. This is great. It's your five ninety five postage, and you get you can choose red, you can choose white, mixed case. You can get whatever you want, whatever your taste is. It's great. Wine fifty two. Go click the link. Try some new wine. It's all very good. Wine, wine fifty two. Do it. Yeah. You know why you should do it? Because it's uh, wine fifty two. Just don't whine about it. On a roll today, mate. <laughs> you look so impressed. <laughs> wine fifty two dot com forward slash wrestle talk. Click the link. Let's yeah. get some of your ultra chats. Everybody get a little bit wine drunk. It's the perfect yeah. way to watch NXT. Yeah. Or in, this, or in today's case, our predictions. Even our better. predictions, which are coming up after this NXT stream. By the way, yeah, we're doing predictions for the Royal Rumble. After this NXT stream, it's going to be at like half past four today, UK time. Stick around in this stream, because then you'll be automatically taken over to the prediction stream so you don't even have to go anywhere you can just stay here and then watch the prediction straight after this where i'm going to be pre i'm facing lukewarm luke owen for the jam that championship i can get my baby back and tempest is going to be part of the royal jamble we're going to be revealing everyone's numbers for the royal jamble tempest is going to win i will win the jam that championship and we're going to face each other at wrestle jam yeah and it's going to be great can't wait see that that was the truth that was the truth i'm not All a liar of those things are going to happen Yep, absolutely. Let's get to some of your ultra chats here. Russelltalk.com forward slash support. Send those in. We're going to be reading all the ones that are five US dollars by the time the show goes off the air. The Sheldon Show said, uh, I feel in a blackmail situation with WWE. Like I have to support Walter's name change to keep my favorite wrestler strong in the company's eyes. Hope last night is assigned the name is the only change and his presentation as a five-star ring general remains. I don't believe them. I will no. not. It's it's like it's like the end of or it's actually like the beginning of Memento, where it's just like bang. Sure. Do not trust this man. Mm -hmm. That man is Vince. It's a picture of Vince. I don't know. It might be a while since everybody's seen Memento. He's actually talking about Vince. It, do not trust yeah. this man. It's a picture of Vince. That is yeah. the story of my life. My life is Memento. I do not trust them to maintain the excellence that is Walter. No. And I, I think one of the main things that, like we were talking about before, one of the things that makes Walter so engaging across a lot of the time is that he's not used very often. And when uh -huh. he does, he always has like a five-star classic match. Like he's such a good wrestler that any match he has is amazing. And I'm worried with this whole set roster formula, they're doing a six-man tag next week. I'm worried that he's just going to get watered down and he's going to oh, have yeah. very quick matches and it won't be a Walter-style match or a Gunther-style match no. at this point. I'm We're sorry. not doing that. We're not okay. doing that. We're okay. not doing that. Yeah, but like, <laughs> for, for real, this will be the most often that I will have ever seen Walter. Yeah, totally. And I'm worried about that. Mm -hmm. I want yep. the shine of Walter to last forever yep. and to illuminate the entire wrestling world. I do not want it to be extinguished. Yeah. Uh, Luke Owen has chimed in on the, the ultra chat. Apparently, he has donated, this is a quote, loads of dollars, <laughs> apparently. Uh, this is, well done on not... <laughs> dollar sign loads. Uh, yeah. Well done on not naming this video boobs with a thumbnail of boobs with the text boobs on it like Twitter wanted. You're better than everyone else. It was the only thing Twitter could talk about yesterday. Insane. I mean, Raquel Gonzalez likes to show off her back a lot. That's like her thing. It's true. She's like, look at my back. Yeah. Like Ollie J probably has a much more impressive back, I got to be honest. Maybe. A lot stronger back, anyway. True. Bacon Rasher says, Hi, lads. I stopped watching NXT last week and cancelled recordings. I just had enough. Are you telling me now that the show was actually okay this week? Also, what's the latest on the custody of the AEW Dynamite review? Think I got Ollie shook over this. LIW for life. I... Yeah, you picked a bad week to quit. This week yeah. was, wasn't bad. It was but... okay. It's still, hey, it's still, it's still not a show I would watch. In my you you got to get out at some point. You can't look back on it and be like, mm -hmm. "Oh, that one wasn't wasn't too bad." You just yeah. gotta go. You gotta get out, and go, and not turn back. Yeah, You've done the right Absolutely. thing. Yeah, exactly. You got to rip the band aid. 
and and never come back. Uh, Mayor of Painesville Dan says, hello guys, since this is day three of lonely COVID quarantine for me, sorry to hear that Dan, uh, I'm starting to get on people's nerves online. Therefore, here I am once again to remind everyone that Gunther does not have a TH in the name. The H is silent. Yes, it is technically Gunther. Supposedly. Yeah, supposedly. Know. I'm not calling him that either way. So. Yeah, no, he's Walter. So, whatever. Yeah. I'm just like, wait, what? Yeah. Because is, is it is it is it Gunther? Is it Gunther? Is it Gun Gunter? No, I'm not doing it. Gunther. His, his name is Walter. Walter. Much better. ADX. I mean, a lot of the people on the show that we're talking about, and like Roddy Strong and, and Mark Miv and stuff, are calling him Gunther. The straight mm -hmm. up, like, anglicized version of the name. When he said it last week, I think he said Gunther with a TH. Mm -hmm. was, I don't even know. I, I think, and then I think he said Gunther on this episode. Yeah, he also got one of them accents. You know, they hate those. Mm, yeah, sure. Yeah. You know what we uh, never had a problem with? Figuring out yeah. how to say Walter or Walter. I mean, well, you did just say, is it Walter right. or Volta? Yes. But it doesn't matter. I guess this no, doesn't matter either, but still, no. I'm not calling him that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I'm not calling him that. <laughs> the point <laughs> is, I'm not getting away with him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bob. Um, uh, Riot DR said, uh, now I don't have a lot of experience with magical fireballs, but I guess the more you beat up the spellcaster, the faster you heal. Makes as much sense as anything else on the show. Also, what is it with the facial expression of Von Wagner? L-I-W for life. You know, I was really tempted to title this stream really over the top sarcastic. Like, oh my god, Von Wagner has aligned with Robert Stone! But I, yeah. I got the feeling that people would think I was being legit and I don't think it would come across in text form. <laughs> so... I didn't, but I was very yeah. tempted. To You'd be like, really throw off the Von Wagner. Biggest news. Yeah. The ones, the ones, oh my God. The, the 25 people that Von Wagner is really over with. You'd make <laughs> <Yeah>. them really <laughs> upset. Um, Keith Lloyd said, I have two questions. One, what is Robert Stone's gimmick? And two, why is Mandy Rose, say it, Tempest? Just so sexy. He didn't write just, but it's just so sexy. Close enough. Also, can't wait to see the rise of LAW again this week. LAW 444 Life. Thank you. Uh, we'll get into the rest of your Ultra Chats later. I don't know what Robert Stone's gimmick is. We'll talk about that more later, I suppose. Mm. And Mandy Rose is being desired by a load of other people now at this point. Great. Uh, talk about that more later as well, because that was also on this show. <clears throat> Let's talk about it now. More Ultra Chats later. Russell.com forward slash support. The show started with MSK going to touch the dusty cup and be like, no, don't touch it. Bad things happen when you touch the cup. And then they did a, the entrance and they faced jacket time. Sure. This was strange. A little yeah. bit, you know, yeah. like it was like when Triple H did the, the promo ahead of the first takeover Brooklyn mm -hmm. he's in the ring. And he's just like, shh, guys, shh, shh, yeah. <laughs> you got to let me do this thing. It's going to be really cool. And then you can cherish. Mm -hmm. And they never all the way shut up. You know, they yeah. never all the way be quiet. But, like, they're doing a promo with no mics in front of the camera on the stage in front of all the people just before the yep. lights come on, you know? Yeah. It's just like, it's a bit weird, it? what is to stop this crowd of people from being like, NXT, NXT. <laughs> a director. A director, exactly. It's strange. It's very strange. I always love that that Triple H promo. Take yeah. Brooklyn. The, uh, what was it? We, uh, we started a movement. You made it a revolution, etc. That one. Mm -hmm. it was, yeah, it was a problem. Kind of over the whole revolution promo. <laughs> you heard it nonstop for the last six years in multiple places. Yeah. Just show the wrestling show. Just start yeah, the man. music. Go to the first match. Yeah. Uh, MSK then faced Jacket Time in the Dusty Cup first round. It's pretty sad. And it was a pretty fun match. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed it. Yep. Um, of course they pin Kushida. You got an yeah, Ikumajira right there, but sure, pin Kushida, that's fine. Um, but this was a fun match. MSK. Okay, I then wrote my next note was MSK are very good wrestlers. Why don't they just let them be good wrestlers <laughs> instead of being the weird comedy goofy balls that they are? I don't know. It's about wrestling, weird. Dude. It's about characters. You gotta have a character. Mm, character. You're right. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but this was a good match. Really enjoyed it. A lot of fun back and forth stuff. 
think Manjiro, look, I think, looked particularly good in this match. I haven't seen too much of him actually wrestle before, and I think he had some decent spots in this one. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was a very fun way to open up the show. Got a lot of this is awesome chance at the end. I think it was a little mm-hmm. bit strong. Yeah. I cut this line from from my edited review because I was like, that sounds a little bit more pointed than it should. But I was like, <laughs> I feel like this would have been an acceptable main event on like AEW Dark, you know, mm. where it's just like it's real. It's fun. It's not like a four and a half star match or anything. It's just it, what it's what it needs to be. Yeah, it was you know? good. It was, it was it's, it's a first round Dusty Classic match. So, yeah. You don't, right. you don't need it to be crazy, but I was just like, oh, this is awesome. I was like, is it? It's a little strong. Yeah. Maybe I'm just yeah. a curmudgeonly old man that doesn't want people to have fun. But Yeah, but this, I think so. The fact that we've gotten to the this is awesome chant for like a three-star opening match is just like, I feel like is a step backwards for wrestling. You know, and it doesn't to matter protect... at all. The sanctity. Yeah. Oh, no, this is awesome shit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like the you deserve it chart. You need to preserve the sanctity of that chart. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, this is a fun opener. Yeah. Um, my next note is oh, great. Zoe Stark's backstage with EO. <laughs> mm-hmm. See, if you just ignore everything that doesn't happen in, in the ring, mm-hmm. the show is fine. Yeah. It's all the ridiculous. Ridiculous backstage gimmicks. Yeah. God, delete them all from the show, fast forward through it, and this show goes up a point every week. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, just do some more wrestling. It's fine. Yeah. Um, Zoe Sark is disagreeing with Io Shirai. What else is Why new? Tiffany Why Stratton. Why are they still hanging out? She doesn't like you. Tempus. I don't know Tempus. <laughs> I don't know Tempus. <laughs> oh. uh, Tiffany Stratton says she's going to beat Io Shirai later. Cool. And then she did. Not she sure did. Yep. <laughs> um MSK, we cut back to the ring. MSK is still celebrating. And then out come the Gallaudel Phantasma. And then we cut to a Gamron Crimes promo. And then Carmelo Hayes arrives with Ollie J. And then we cut back to the Gallaudel Phantasma in the ring. Please sort out your pacing, WWE. It's no not idea. hard. This happened more than once on this show. Sure did. But... Oh man. It's rough. Um uh, the Gallagher Phantasma cut a promo, or Santos Escobar specifically cuts a promo about Bron Breaker, um, saying that you know he's going to beat him up, whatever. I'll be honest, I didn't really pay attention to what he was saying because I knew Bron. I was thought this was a bit. good promo. Yeah, I thought this was a good promo. They talked. He talked about. All right, I wasn't going to say anything, but you said Gamron Crimes. <laughs> Did I actually? One person in the chat picked it up, and I was like, I'm going <laughs> to let it go until someone else says it. But yeah, Gamron really Crimes. Really Weagle. Going to talk to William really Weagle. <laughs> 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 but anywho, I thought this was like a really good little promo, you know? I don't like that they can't say the word hate. That has bothered me for like 10 years. But regardless, sure. he's like, I don't. It's like, I don't like you, Brian. In fact, I despise you. I was like, just say mm-hmm. the thing. It's, it's just like, oh, well, that's, that's a bad word. You can't teach kids to say that hate is, is, is an okay thing to say. Just mm-hmm. mm, whatever. It was one of the reasons yep. Batista quit in the first place. But anyway, <laughs> it's neither here nor there. I thought this promo was really good. He talked about being from like similar lineages because they're both second generation. And mm-hmm. he said that it sickens him that Braun Breaker got to NXT so quickly that he's NXT champion so quickly he's only had like a dozen matches and he's NXT champion and he hates that he hates that he got there before him it felt to me because again your heels are supposed to believe what they're saying I believed everything that Santos Escobar said and I mean he's a heel so he's going about it the wrong way because you know he's like a mob boss with his little family that will take you out behind your back and all that. So he's going about it the wrong way. But I understand what he's feeling. And I don't think he's all the way wrong in how he's feeling. He's just going about it the wrong way. That, to me, is proper heel work. And then Braun Breaker came out and cut a decent babyface promo and told Santos Escobar to shut up in Spanish. And everyone went, whoa. <laughs> he I spoke went, the Ooh. foreign language. He said, cállate. Cállate. It was pretty good. I, I honestly, I much preferred Bronze promo to Santos. I don't know what it was about Santos. I think I liked the content of Santos's promo. I just don't think it was delivered super well. Mm. I don't know. Maybe I need to go back and watch it again. Maybe I was just tired or whatever. It's very possible. Um, but yeah, I when Bron came out, I was like, damn, he's actually got a pretty good like 
intensity. Like yeah, like him telling telling Santos to shut up in Spanish was pretty good. And him mm. just saying, just say the challenge and I'll fight you. Just come on, let's fight. And Santos was like, Yeah, we do it on my time. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. this is this is decent. And then Wacky Wild and Ramon Dosa tried to attack Bron and he fends them both off. This was this was decent. If if putting the title on their guy means that they will have a well booked babyface champion. What I, I, there you go. Yeah. It's it's one it's way right. to do it, but as long yeah. as it's done right, hell yeah. Like Braun Breaker coming out and telling him Kayate champs talking. It's like mm. well damn that that's yeah. champ. It's good. He's the top guy. You gonna you gonna try and talk back to him right now? Big jacked up champion with a belt over his shoulder, buzz cut, son of a great like amateur wrestler, crazy strong guy. I was like, Yeah, I wouldn't mess with Braun Breaker. That's yeah. what I want. I've always been behind Braun Breaker. Just wanted to be done properly. Right yeah. now, I think the whole Braun Breaker Santos Escobar thing is very intriguing. I'm much, very much behind it. I think Braun has really good baby face fire, which we don't see a lot. Yeah, because you often see the heel fire. You don't yeah. really often see the baby face fire, and when you do, it's often accompanied with some pretty like bad lines that are written for them. Um, but this I thought was very good. Played up Braun's strengths very well. Mm-hmm. Um, we then had a video package for. Boa and Solo Sokoa, and then they had a match, uh, which was a false count anywhere, no DQ match. It was okay. I oh, thought it was fine. It yeah. was all right. Um, you didn't have spooky Boa garbage, and as long as you don't have the spooky garbage, true. I can I can handle Boa being on my TV if he's not doing stupid Boa things. Yeah. Well, yeah. both of them had face paint on in this one. Um, it's allowed. Right? I like sure. Jeff Hardy. I like Finn Balor. <laughs> uh, and they, they kind of went back and forth a bit. There was a few weapon shots to start with, a few chairs and stuff like that. They went to the back and were doing this whole thing against like a, a, a um, what's it called? Like a grate, like a metal grate. To, to... Door. Yeah, sure. One of those. One of the ones where you got to pull the chain to get the thing to go up. Yeah, and then he pulled it, and then I like that you did not see the fire extinguisher, so it looked like uh, Solo Sokoa just kind of like missed at him <laughs> with something. <laughs> no, you, know been... favorite, you know what my favorite bit of all this was? Because mm. I don't know, I don't know why I had like one moment of I'm gonna really psychoanalyze a line from commentary. Sure. Where I just decided, you know what? No, that doesn't make sense. It's where they they were like hitting the garage door with a ladder because he was like trying to impale it with this ladder mm-hmm. and i think vic joseph says like they've 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 beaten that garage door beyond recognition <laughs> and i love the idea of of him sitting there and they're like bang hit the garage door he's like bang hit the garage door bang hit the garage door what the hell is that <laughs> What that's not a garage door. What is I have no idea what that is. I've never seen that before in my life. What what Wade? What is that? What 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 is that? What it doesn't make any sense. What is <laughs> it's like I will never be able to recognize that thing again. No, it's just I just have no idea. Some sort of metal contraption, you know. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, uh, um, what is he what did he say? Um a mechanical mechanism. I think is what Vader used to call his his little head thingy. Yeah. God. Terrible. <laughs> um, I thought this was decent. I thought I quite liked the finishing spot of uh, Solo Sokoa doing a splash to the outside through a table. That's a fun little spot like that. Had good camera um, work for once. Huh? That spot yeah. had good camera work for once. They sure shot it, it from below. Had them crash yeah. through. I'll give them props when they get something right. Yeah. Um. Probably a nitpick on my part. Something I didn't really like. They had three chairs set up in three corners of the ring, like mm. in, like wedged in between the ropes. Right, yeah, yeah. And Solo went through and smashed Boa's face off the three chairs, one after the other. And then Boa got straight up and like dropped him off the off the top rope. I was like, I feel like you should have sold that a bit more. Like it's three <laughs> chairs to the face, you know? Like that's yeah. like an ending spot, you know? Mm-hmm. And he took three of them straight back to back to back and then was just like, and throw you off the top rope. Okay. Can that I... is a nitpick, though. Yeah, I thought this match was like fine. I thought I hope it's a blow off. I hope we're done here. If if Boa yes. attacks Sola Sokoa next week, I I will walk off the show. Yeah. But regardless, for what it was, I thought it was very good. Also, this is unrelated. I don't know if this is accurate. I feel like this mask, like not pinches, but applies pressure here. 
Because it's mm -hmm. only when I wear this mask for these shows, my nose just starts running. <laughs> and I don't know why. I think it must it's, be. Like, it's only... Because I will talk to you off, mm -hmm. off recording for how long. I'll be in the meetings. I'll be totally fine. Soon as we get, like, 10, 15 minutes into this, I'm just like, uh, uh, what is happening? Yeah. It, it, it's, it's become... A pattern. <laughs> I would like to get to the bottom of it. I think the solution, uh, Tempest, is you got to take the mask off. It's not happening, Pete. Okay, fair enough. Well, uh, after that, uh, we then got an Imperium promo. He's still called Gunther. That's still his name. Uh, he gave a justification for the name change in this one, saying that he needs to stand on his own two feet. Like, he, you know, he was given his name from his grandfather, who he respects massively, but now he needs to carve his own path and he needs to, to stand on his own two feet with his own identity. He's called Gunther. As an explanation, mm -hmm. that's better than the no explanation we usually get. Yep. I still would not have done this. <laughs> no. Not at but all. I, and, I, I and I will say the low levels of effort that have been put in. Yeah. And I will say from last week when we were kind of freaking out about the whole Gunther Stark thing, him not being called Gunther Stark, thumbs up. It's 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 just Gunther. That is better. Yeah. Still not good, but it is better than Gunther Stark. Now it is literally just at this point a name change. Yeah. Which is pointless. Why'd you change the name? But it's yeah. nowhere near as bad as it could have been. So that's good, Indeed. at least. Agreed. Um, then had Duke Hudson versus Guru Raj in a squash match. Duke Hudson won. Uh, speaking of weird babyface fire that has a really cringe line in it, Dante Chen then came out and said, "I'm going to show you the respect that you didn't give me la uh, <laughs> that you didn't give me last week by letting you know, here I come." And then ran down to the ring. I was like, mm. <laughs> "That's all right. Needs some, Need some yeah. work, but." I feel like anytime I see something that I don't like on this show from a young guy, I'd be like, that's developmental. <laughs> that's the get out of jail free card right there. Yeah, it's like supposedly it's 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 developmental, yeah. but it's like yeah. it's but fine. I, I like that they that put the defense. focus back on him. You know, yes. I like that they because we watched last week's show and De Dante Chen, I was just like, Wow, look at that promo package where he talks about wanting to wrestle for his recently deceased father. That's like really emotional, really powerful, really moving. I really like that. And then he like there was a DQ in his match in a minute because of Duke Hudson. And I was like, well, that was stupid. At mm -hmm. least now it's not like because how many times would we see that? And then the sh all of the focus would be shifted to Duke Hudson. Yeah. It happens all the time. Yeah. I like that they've put the focus back on Dante Chen. I'm looking for the mm -hmm. positive this week. I like Dante Chen's character. So I'm I'm glad to see that he's not just gonna be forgotten. Yeah, I agree. Um and hopefully he gets to do some good stuff. Fingers crossed, because I quite like him. Uh, we then had Indy Hartwell and Persia Prada and Katie Ray doing a backstage promo. They said nothing. They said, we're going to win, basically. Um, again, nitpick, but it's something I noticed on the show. I hate when you have a group of people, they finish a backstage promo, and they walk off in separate directions. It's like, <laughs> where, where are you going? going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're a <laughs> Uh, no, my favorite one of those ever was mm -hmm. the old. It was like DX in 2006, where they finish their promos, they go off in separate direction. Then you see Triple H just go and <laughs> yeah. run back across the screen. <laughs> they had, um, like, they had that with Austin Theory, it, I think, in the way. Fun, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but when you do it legit, it's like, why have you done that? Anyway, um, Toxic Attraction then came out to face Indy Persia and Katie Ray, but also. We then had uh, Legado del Fantasma promo first, where uh, Santos was saying that he has to face uh, Wacky Wild and Raul Mendoza two on one, unless he can find a friend. Does he have a friend? He doesn't have a friend. He's all alone. He doesn't have friends. Friends? That's not what he has. This is why you don't team with three heels at War Games. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Then we had the actual match. Of Toxic Attraction versus Indy Hartwell, Purge Brada, and Kaylee Ray. I like that the ring announcer only introduced Kaylee Ray and not <laughs> Indian Persia. Sure, whatever. The people um, that won. Mm -hmm. When you yeah. look at it, the people that won the match didn't get 
introduced. Yep. Backwards. That's fine. Um, my next note for this is, of course, they pin the champions. Um, yeah. Why not? Sure, they don't have a women's tag division, so pff, who cares? This Aren't was they fine. doing a women's Dusty Cup right now? Yep. Just have them win the Dusty Cup. You get your shot. Yep. Easy. Yep. <laughs> Why are you beating the champions? Oh, my lord. So, in storyline, Toxic Attraction just suck. They have all the belts, but they suck. They can't win matches, you yeah. know, without excessive tomfoolery involved mm-hmm. in Anaganery. I dislike this idea. I yeah. also, this is difficult because, again, it's developmental, so I want to cut people some slack. I feel like some of these matches are a little too long for someone like JC Jane. Fair. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, I do think that having her involved in six women tag team matches is the best way to, for her to improve, for sure. But these are the kind of shows that, you know, should be house shows. Mm-hmm. Helping helping people get over a more natural yeah. setting. As opposed I, to you know, trying to learn on the fly doing TV. It's great for a developmental promotion that's not a TV show yeah. every week. You know, like actual yeah. developmental, how it should be. Like yeah. a developmental show it's not a weekly tv show yeah. why yeah. are we watching developmental um <clears throat> I the match was like fine the match you know, was fine. it was it was fine i wasn't like appalled i wasn't blown away <laughs> kaylee ray chased uh mandy rose to the back with her bat and then persia prada won with her i don't even know what the move is called but it's like a uh, she's got the fireman's carry and then she twists with it you know, it's mm-hmm. kind of like an F5, but not as impressive. Yes. An F5, you know? but not as impressive. I agree. Yeah. She she twists them the other way. Mm-hmm. She pushes the legs off as opposed to pushing. I guess that is still how no. Rockbuster does it, but does it yeah. the other way. Yes. Yeah. Drops them like between yes. her legs sitting down. Yeah, it's like, it's like a sit out F5. Kind yeah. Of. How do you make a sit out F5 look not impressive? I don't know. I don't know. It's whatever. Again, Idris Enofe, worrying about this yeah. Match, Idris Enofe and Malik Blade had a promo. Idris Enofe wants to ask out Mandy Rose. Do you know why, Tempest? She's got ambition. Come on, Tempest. Say the thing. She's just so sexy, Pete. <laughs> yeah, she is. Um, uh, sure. They've been given a bit of character now. I like them. <laughs> yeah. I like both yeah, right? of them. I watch them and I want them to succeed. I don't know why. Sure. Maybe they're just because they're they're young dudes that I think mm-hmm. appear to be talented and have potential. But I don't know. I like I see them. I don't know uh, who are they facing in like the the are they facing the Creed brothers or something in the semifinals. Uh, or are they facing no? MSK? They're, no, they're, they're facing MSK. Yeah. All right. I want them to have like a twenty five minute match and have it be really good in the main event. Mm-hmm. And lose, but get the rub from a really great match. If they did that, I'd be very, very happy. I wouldn't be surprised if they... No, I was going to say if they win. But I think they're telling the story of MSK too much. Yeah. Um, I was thinking that the stare-off they have with Legado del Fantasma might mean that LDF might interfere, cost MSK, and have NFA and yeah. Malik Blade get another shock victory. You know? But, I don't know. Um, we then had... Uh, Grizzle Junk veterans come out for their match earlier today. Here's Raquel Gonzalez. Whiplash. Those two things um, are related. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Cora Jade still wants to tag with Raquel. Oh. And Raquel was like, "No." Why and then do you Cora was like, to? But we can win stuff. And then she's like, "I please leave me alone." And she's like, "But Raquel, let me prove it to you." And she's like, "Piss off, please." So I'm assuming they're going to tag together soon. They're facing each other next week, but I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming they're going to tag together after that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so unbelievable. You know? I don't believe that Raquel Gonzalez, the character she is right now, would end up teaming with Cora Jade in two weeks. I yeah. don't believe her stance would be changed. Mm-hmm. Unless Cora Jade, like, saves her life or something. She'll get persuaded next week. out of the way of a moving car. 
Yeah. Save her life. Give her a debt I mean, of gratitude. Mandy Rose turned up in a little helicopter for New Year's Evil, right? So mm-hmm. maybe she's going to get, you know, cut up by the, the helicopter blades from Mandy Rose. And Cora Jade is like, no, I'll That's protect cool. you. And then she does. Solid See? It all makes plan. sense. There you go. Yeah. Yep. You know, yeah. like Cora J just looks like such a geek in these segments. A little bit. You don't yep. want to be the baby face that no one wants to be your friend. Tell me about it. How's that worked out for Zoe Stark? We don't like that <laughs> character either. It's the same character. It's a loser baby yeah. face trying to get the cool person to hang out with them. Yeah. That would be fine if I wasn't supposed to cheer the, the loser. You mm-hmm. know? You know, like you can yeah. you can have the geek. It's like like you're supposed to cheer Hornswoggle a certain way when he's trying to be in DX. Mm-hmm. I'm not expecting Hornswoggle to challenge for the top championship. Cora Jade was challenging for the top championship like two weeks ago. There's a difference. It was. Grizzled veterans then faced off against Andre Chase and Bodie Haywood. Someone watched Point Break when they were naming people. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I said in this match, Andre Chase doing the stumps and calling out the give me a C. And then he stumps as everyone goes, C, give me an H, H, as he does the stump. I could see that getting over. It's a little, like, cool little chant or whatever. But then I wrote, what the F are these splashes from Bodie Hayward? Right? Oh what was God, that? These gym class spots. Oh, it wasn't good. Ooh, he looked yeah. uh just a just I called just them burpees. What I don't even remember what he was doing. It's like as soon as I stopped watching it, I forgot yeah. the actual no, he just, of what he was doing. He was just yeah, sprinting he was like, on drop, the stop. Sprinting, drop down, get up, splash. Kind of thing. He didn't even do the drop down, he just sprinted That's on the spot good. and then just splash. And then he got up and then sprinted on the spot and the crowd went, oh, because they're directed, you see. And then he did a little splash uh, and then got up again and kept sprinting on the spot and looked really happy doing it as well. And then did he's a on splash. TV. This is his first match on TV. Sure. Be happy. Yeah. But sure. yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't I didn't really. There wasn't much to get into with this tag match. It was pretty quick. Nah. You know, the Grizzly Dunk yeah. Vets won. That's a plus. That's a big plus. Double I code breaker. Been... Yeah, I don't know what that was about. For honestly, I saw that and I was like, oh, that's not their usual finish. And then for the mm-hmm. light, I sat there and just went like, I have no memory of what the ticket to mayhem looks like. <laughs> <laughs> like I just went, I, I don't I don't remember. I don't remember what this move is. It's, like. it's normally know. a code breaker, but it's the throw up into it, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Like oh. I know that I'd seen it, but it was just my brain yeah. went blank. You know, like, <laughs> I may have what may as well this? never have seen that move before. Yeah. Also. Uh, what's his face? Andre Chase had like the most pitiful Dusty Rhodes tribute spot ever. You know? Yep. Sure Where he was like, bam, bam, bam. Oh, bam. You know, Cody doesn't mm-hmm. like every match. Mm. Cody does it a lot better than Andre Chase did it here. Well, like I saw it and I went, oh, I would be offended. Yeah. Uh, but then don't worry. The story's not over there, guys. Because it's time for the return of Von Wagner. Oh, I know dude. everyone was really keen about this. Oh, everyone dude. was on the edge of their seats thinking, where's Von Wagner? Don't worry, he's back. He beat up Andre Chase University afterwards. And then Robert Stone got in the ring and gave him a jacket. And then he put on a jacket and the commentator was like, oh my God, Von Wagner has joined Robert Stone. The oh earth God, will never be the same time. again. He joined jacket time. That's what this was actually about. I ju- Tempest, it's a jack. He's got a jacket on now. Oh my god! I can't. What's gonna happen yeah. next? Does that mean Naomi can't touch him either? <laughs> There's so many jacket and jacket related stories. Yeah, I mean, we There's even had three. one. Jesus Christ! You have three things about jackets. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sort of. I don't think this one's actually gonna be about jackets, but there's been it, like it felt like it was. There's been three segments at least related to jackets in one week. I feel like I'm losing my yeah. mind. Oh my god. Good god. Um I, Yeah. 
I don't know. Could Von Wagner that. might be approaching uh, approaching Boa territory in terms of mm. I do not give a shit levels. I could not care less about this man. <laughs> they have no. actively made him less interesting by putting him with Robert Stone. Yeah. Like, God. He started at his peak of entering that four-way for the world title, and he has gotten less interesting every week. Yep. That's impressive. Hey, man. He debuted on SmackDown that one week. <laughs> oh, he was a ghost. <laughs> he was a vision. He was an apparition. Only Sami Zayn could see him. Yep. Sami Zayn's going to come back to NXT, see Von Wagner, and be like, oh, <laughs> you again. Yep. I don't um, think you're real. Grayson Waller did a promo. Cool. And then we had Io Shirai versus Tiffany Stratton. They played the 2K22 trailer. Sure looks like a 2K game. And mm -hmm. then uh, Shirai won the match after Tiffany Stratton took the majority of the offense for some reason. Interesting. Yeah. Sure. Man, I could do without her screaming about daddy all the time you know mm -hmm. like i i, I don't want to rant like yeah some people like that <laughs> not me some people not me no. not me but you know like i don't want to rant every week about them having to have their stupid little caricatures Ca mm -hmm. damn it carrot catchers the caricature carrot catches yep yeah but i mean good lord I, I do not need to see this cartoon wrestling show where the sleeping girl is talking with the daddy's girl. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it is fake. It's a fake show with fake people. I don't believe anything that I see on this show. Sometimes, sometimes you can you can steer close enough into reality, like with the Santos Escobar Braun Breaker thing, where they're like, oh, we're both second generation wrestlers. And I was like, well, that's true. All right, so you, you've gotten me to believe you so far. But then I also get stuff like this, where I'm just mm -hmm. like, why am I watching this this person? Again, here's a here's an example where she goes up at the beginning of the show and she's like, oh, you you get this off the discount rack to Zoe Stark or whatever, talking about how terrible her outfit was. Sure, it's like you're we're in a props department. None of this is <laughs> yours. If if imagine take me back two years ago, Rob Gronkowski signs with WWE. If he comes out, comes in as a heel, having been like four-time Super Bowl champion or whatever he was at the time, multi-million dollar guy, he could come in wearing whatever he wants. If he walked up to Kona Reeves, it was just like, <clears throat> I'd be like, I believe it. Yeah. He's real. He's a real guy. I don't believe that anything about Tiffany Stratton is real. Fair. I also don't think that you should be beating new characters on their second match. Fair. It's also Io Shirai, so... Just don't beat match. Just, yeah, just, don't beat, match. just never yeah. beat people. Mr. Yeah. Perfect beat a lot of people before he came up against Hulk Hogan. You know? You don't yeah. have to go straight to it and have them lose. Diamond Mine did a promo. They want a six-man tag next week. Cree Brothers have some decent intensity on their promo. Roderick Strong should have a mouthpiece. That's all I'm yeah. going to say. Yeah, He always should have, you know? Like, I love Roddy, but that's never been his strongest suit. Not at all, no. Um, then we got uh, Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams. They had a musical performance from Ollie J. It was I not mean, good. <laughs> not. I, I prefer this sort of thing to like a poppy performance. That That's just personal taste. I would yeah. rather not see either of them on my wrestling show, you know? But, yeah. I mean, if I... I gotta if I gotta listen to Screamo or or rap, I'm choosing rap. Yeah. That's also, they, I like they... I like that it worked in the promo package. What? I was just about to criticize that because I didn't oh. like that. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> they spliced in the uh, little bits of Tony D'Angelo and uh, Cameron Grimes hyping up the main event, and for me, it just didn't fit at all. It was just like she's doing a performance. Cameron Grimes, what? And it's mm -hmm. her just doing just doing some more rap, and then you just see Tony D'Angelo going, "Hey!" It's like, what? You huh? What's going on? I I prefer this over just a performance. At least they tried to sure. work it into the show itself. Like if there's a little bit of effort there, I can I can give them some credit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, 
they did this at like Takeover New Orleans or something like that too, where they did a live performance for the opening video package. Yes. You yeah. Know? It's pretty That's cool. fine. I, I don't mind like a, the opening yeah. to a big show having a musical performance to be like, this is the introduction, his video yeah. package, here's the, the theme song for the thing. Having it yeah. before the main event is just like yeah. weird to me. But, yeah. Eh. Um, we then had, okay, so we had that musical performance, then Tony D'Angelo does a promo, then Tiffany Stratton does a promo with Wendy Chu, I don't care. And then we got the main event of Cameron Grimes versus Tony D'Angelo. Uh, with the return of Pete Dunn with a cricket bat, um, who cost Tony D'Angelo, huh? Why do you, why does he have a cricket bat? Because he's English. Do do y'all just carry those everywhere? I don't. Who cares? <laughs> just <laughs> whatever. <laughs> who cares? Yeah. It's it's uh, dumb. It's like, oh, yeah, it is Pete Dunn. Wah, wah. <laughs> I okay. thought he was Pete Dunn with NXT. Ah, oh, there it is. Now we're now we're on it. Um, Cameron Grimes won thanks to that. He was going back and forth with Tony D'Angelo a bit. I thought the match was fine. I thought it was mm -hmm. decent. Um, till the end, I would rather Cameron Grimes just won, personally. But you know, um, but yeah, he won. Cameron Grimes, number one contender. Cool. Yeah, it's Good. it's it's cool. God, you're right, a shock. If I was a character in NXT, I would carry a hockey stick everywhere. That, mm -hmm. that would be the thing. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, if, I thought the main event was, like, fine. It was, like, solid. Yeah. Three out of five main events, which is decent enough. Had the right person win. I'm excited for the direction of Cameron Grimes and Carmelo Hayes. I think that should be a good match. I'm at least fine with the idea of Pete Dunne and Tony D'Angelo having one more match. That's that's all right, I suppose. Uh, overall, I thought it was a uh, pretty fine episode of nxt when like there were a few backstage segments where i saw them and went like this is really stupid i don't like this but they were mostly quick mm -hmm. and otherwise we got a lot of decent to good wrestling a decent to good promo a couple matches that i could do without but overall i think this is like a low four I thought there was, like, sure maybe maybe a high three for the show but like i'd, I'd have given it a three I don't think I liked some some stuff as much as you did, but this was the decent show. It, it didn't piss me off for once. Mm. Like I watched yeah. the whole show without getting pissed off, and that was like, all right, that's a four out of five. That's fair. Give yeah, me that every week. If I could have it, this every week, just a competently booked wrestling show, I take mm -hmm. it. It it didn't piss me off. It also didn't make me that excited, which that is like was the other thing. I had no idea what to say in my editor review because the show mm -hmm. just was very unremarkable. Yeah. I would just prefer unremarkable but fairly logical to mm -hmm. the Gunther reveal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe that was last week? It's been yeah, one yeah. week since it feels Gunther. Like it was a year ago. Ridiculous. Um so before we get into the rest of your ultra chats, one more time I want to say thank you to Wine52 for sponsoring this stream. Thank you so much, Wine52. Go click the link, wine52.com forward slash wrestle talk. You can get a free crate of three wine bottles just for the postage of 5.95 UK viewers only. Um go go get it. Wine's good. Wine's a good drink. Go drink it. Wine 52. Yeah. Do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Wine's good. Go drink it. Wine is good. Go drink it, but also drink responsibly. <laughs> um, but you, you get the wines from different regional country each time. So that's nice. And then you can choose what ones you want, whether it's like red or white or mixed or whatever. So you go. Go do the thing. Wine52.com forward slash wrestle talk. Also, Tempest, before yeah. we do get into the final lot of these ultra chats here, after this stream, we will be doing the Royal Rumble predictions, where it's going to mm -hmm. be me versus Luke for the championship. You're going to be entering the Royal Jamble. Uh, I've seen that there's been a bunch of people that have been hyping up their Jamble entries. People have been declaring all over social media. Um, one of those people who we're going to be seeing in the stream later, Social Media Abby has mm. declared for the Rumble. What? Social Media Abby, are the rumours true? Are you going to be in this year's Royal Jamble? I don't know how you heard this, but yes, the rumours are true. I've been behind the scenes for far too long. It's time for me to make my main roster debut. I will win the Royal Jamble. I will go on to Wrestle Jamia and I will become the first ever female Jam That Champion. I will see the other losers at predictions. Now get out of my face. I've got work to do. Uh, 
That's some strong <laughs> words from social media abby right there very strong words mm. staying out of her way you yeah think? Uh, i don't know i don't want i don't want to say anything i have an idea for this <laughs> prediction stream i could do it all though. right <laughs> um but we'll see abby and tempest and me and luke and a bunch of other people oh my god so many people on the prediction stream straight after this one stick around on this stream because then you'll be automatically directed over to the prediction stream afterwards but first we need to get into the rest of your ultra chats five dollars and up send those in at russell.com forward slash support last chance to do so uh ben grimshaw said hi would either of you sign for nxt as a wrestler if they offered you a contract <laughs> no i mean depends on who i am if i if i'm hmm. like mm, although no i don't think i would i don't think there's a scenario maybe if i was like broke if the options mm -hmm. were working for nxt or starving i would probably oh, yeah. pick nxt but if yeah, i'm sure. if i'm an, if i'm a, a new wrestler and I want to train and learn, I would not go to NXT because I don't think they train people very well. No. If I'm if I'm at all an established talent, I don't want to go to NXT. My mm -hmm. goals and my views of life and everything do not align with working for NXT as a wrestler. I agree. Also, I'm not a wrestler, so no. Um, Jared Hazelwood said, not NXT related, but I wanted to know uh, Tempest's thoughts on this. Haku versus Minoru Suzuki, who goes over? Oh, in real life, in real <laughs> yeah. life, Haku. I'm never betting Haku. against Haku. Haku yeah. is the most terrifying man that's ever existed in wrestling. Uh, so apparently, these next off chats have just been renamed to Yu Gi Oh chats. Hell yeah. <laughs> Blind Raw influence says, uh, spreads. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Blind Raw says, since I haven't watched 2.0, and this was uh, a lot less offensive episode from last week uh let's talk about something else tempest are you playing Yu-Gi-Oh master duel what's your deck looking like uh i am not playing master duel i played for about 15 minutes it wasn't really for me because i played one match online with someone who like xyz summoned or or pendulum summoned or something i don't understand how it works again i, I played like one card set one thing set face down i had to go first of course because i lost the rock paper scissors deal and I was like, okay, there's my turn. And then the next person just went like, and then I do this, and then I do this, and then I activate this with a special effect of this, and that allows me to summon this. And I was like, I'm lost. This yeah. game isn't for me anymore. So I've mm -hmm. heard there's like a, a story mode, like a single player campaign type deal where you can go through and just play. I might look into trying to do that, but overall, I'm, I'm not really into it. The Jedi Muffin says, oh boy, the Jamble is almost here. I wonder how strong Kali is going to be with uh, in his chops during this year's Rumble. Also, who's more over? Cameron Grimes' To The Moon or Yugi telling his giant uh, soldier of stone to attack the moon? Attack the moon. <laughs> <laughs> That's my band name, Attack the Moon. Attack the Moon, nice. Yeah. 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 Very good. Was, um, uh, oh, I forget... I was having a, a conversation with the lady partner recently, and that came up. Something about dolphins. It was yeah. It was it was like my band name was like uh, uh, the disingenuous dolphins or something like that. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something like that. Amazing. Uh, I think that is going to do it for the ultra chats for this stream. So that's going to do it for the stream as a whole. The. Uh, prediction stream will be kicking off in about 25 minutes from now but stay here in this very stream and you'll be directed straight over to that one when it starts so you don't even have to go anywhere you don't even have to leave lift a finger window. leave the window yeah. open we'll be right back not the it's cold out though so don't leave that window open but the window on your browser leave that one open thanks for that clarification I'm, pete i am on the ball today <laughs> thank you everyone for watching this episode of the nxt podcast uh subscribe more videos etc thank you so much to wine 52 once more wine 52.com forward slash wrestle talk go click that link and, and get yourself a free crate of wine three wine bottles and stick around for the royal rumble predictions happening soon where i will win back my championship and tempest will win the royal jamble and everything will be liw once again liw for life and jam that jam. I said forget about it, cuz. <laughs>